I'm very pleased to be here today to discuss our 12th annual report on ways to enhance government efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, as was mentioned in your opening statement, Madam Chair, uh, the past 11 reports that we've issued, annual reports on this, had about 1,300 recommendations. Congress has either fully, and the administration have either fully or partially implemented 74% of those recommendations. And they've led to the cited savings that you uh, pointed out, uh, which include $535 billion that's already been saved, another $21 billion that will be saved uh, in the coming years based upon the already implemented recommendations. Now, we think there are tens of billions of additional dollars that right. could be saved in implementing the recommendations uh, that were either partially or not at all addressed uh, in our previous 11 reports. And then again, this year, we have 94 new actions that we identified that could also lead to additional savings and improvements in the government efficiency and effectiveness. And again, this year, as our prior 11 reports have done, these cover the very spectrum of the federal government's activities. For example, the Department of Energy could pursue less expensive options for disposing of low-level uh, hazardous and nuclear waste, thereby saving tens of billions of dollars, potentially. Uh, we also found that federal contracting leaders could employ a use of metrics that we found that a cross-section of private sector entities use to drive down costs and improve the uh, performance of their procurement opportunities, this would give an additional billions of dollars uh, in savings. Also, uh, the government could encourage better staffing at skilled nursing facilities, thereby preventing uh, very costly uh, hospital readmissions or emergency room visits within 30 years of, excuse me, 30 days of somebody entering a skilled nursing facility, thereby the government paying extra on top of the daily rate for that facility. Uh, there are opportunities for IRS to focus more attention on eliminating what has been a growing uh, amount of interest paid on tax refunds uh, for various reasons. Uh, also, there are opportunities to reduce uh, overpayments in the Ticket to Work program at the Social Security Administration for disability benefits. Uh, this would, is a program that's set up to help people uh, get back to work, uh, but if they don't make timely uh, changes to the process, uh, they're overpaying these people. Uh, allowing them to keep their work benefits as well as receiving disability benefits. Uh, there's also opportunities at the Defense Department to reduce costs for feeding the military through food service, uh, changes that could be put in place, as well as travel reimbursements. Uh, millions of dollars could be saved there as well. Uh, we also have called on Congress to designate a federal agency to uh, be the lead and develop a national strategy for diet-related chronic health conditions. Currently, there are over 200 federal efforts at 21 federal agencies. There's not a coordinated national strategy. Uh, this you know, has uh, a lot of consequences, both for the health of the American people, the longevity of people living, as well as additional costs borne by our already burdened healthcare system. So we think this would be a good recommendation as well. I, I thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today uh, and to discuss our work. And I, I appreciate very much uh, Senator Hassan, you and Senator Paul's uh, introduction of legislation to support our recommendations. And I very much uh, uh, thank you for that effort and look forward to continuing to work with this committee. Uh, testified on these issues before, before Senator Johnson uh, as well, and uh, I appreciate the Congress's, particularly this committee's, continued interest. 